Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Leanna Brinder, Business Editor for the International Business Times. Joining me now to talk about the Scottish referendum is Michael Saunders. He's the Head of European Economics at City. So hi, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Well, we're in a very exciting period. A few months ago, um, yourselves and other analysts were saying that it was very unlikely that uh, Scotland would become independent. But the last month, there seems to be a change in the polls. How are you guys as economists viewing this situation? Well, the polls tell you it's neck and neck at the moment. The last few polls have all been very close. And there's really two big shifts that have been happening in public opinion over the last few weeks. The first is that younger voters are swinging in favour of independence. The voters over 60 are still firmly against, as they were. But the second is that the younger voters are more likely to actually vote. So there's been a sharp rise in the share of people aged under 40 years who say that they are certain to vote. And the combination of those two things gives the yes vote a big boost. It's also clear the yes vote got a much better ground operation, much more efficient and effective canvassing at the local areas. Many independent analysts from all over the financial services industry have um, said over the past year just how much uncertainty there is over the pound, um, over um, regulation and so forth. Do you feel that there has been more facts presented from the Yes campaign over the last six months, let's say? No, I think there are four big areas of concern which could occur in the event of Scottish independence. That's over what currency arrangements would they have, the relatively weak fiscal position, which is highly dependent on oil revenues, and oil revenues have halved over the last couple of years. The position of the major banks, whether they'd have to move their main operations out of Scotland into the UK, and whether a, a newly independent Scotland could become a member of the EU and NATO. Those issues have not yet been sorted out, but the polls suggest it is neck and neck. So the No campaign's focus on those issues so far doesn't appear to have been decisive. In the next week we should have a result, um, but what would you say would be if Scotland did become independent, the immediate um, impacts and maybe the longer term issues that the Scottish economy would face? If Scotland votes for independence on the 18th, on the 19th we'll start a lengthy process of negotiation between the Scottish Government and the UK Government. Now the Scottish Government hopes that this process will be complete and the move to independence would occur in early 2016. I have to tell you, I think it would take rather longer than that not least because the negotiation process would probably be stalled during the UK general election, which is in May of 2015. So this negotiation process probably would stretch out for a couple of years. With luck, they'll sort out some of these things like the currency policy, the fiscal position and so forth in independent Scotland, and the subsequent position would not be too messy. But some of these issues are really quite difficult to sort out. There would be issues for the UK as well. Scotland would immediately be the UK's second biggest trading partner, there'd be political spill out for the UK. It's not just issues for Scotland, it's issues for the UK as well. One of the, I suppose, jewels in the crown for Scotland and their economy, um, maybe more so in the past, has been oil. But of course, UK as well, um, overall, would uh, reap the benefits from the revenue. However, if Scotland did become independent, do you see oil as a major contributing factor to Scotland's economy as much as the Yes campaign have been uh, pushing forward? Oil and gas production is between 10 and 15% of Scotland's GDP, so that's fairly sizable. Quite a lot of jobs depend on oil and will continue to depend on oil. But the amount of government tax revenue which they get from that oil and gas production is falling sharply and probably will fall further. And that's because more of the production now is in more marginal fields where costs are higher, the profitability of that production is less, and hence the tax take is falling. The tax take now is only half what it was a couple of years ago. It's not going to rise significantly in coming years. All the marginal fields will create jobs, but they won't create much money for the government. What would you say in terms of how um, markets have reacted? has given an indication of uh, the kind of risks or concerns over possible independence. Until about a week ago, markets really paid little attention to this, and people assumed that Scottish independence wouldn't happen. It was a tail risk, interesting, but really not something that which people focused on that much. Suddenly now markets are focused on it very heavily as the vote gets closer and the poll gap gets narrower, and this has seen a weaker pound, and some rise in gilt yields and some worries over individual companies. 
And I'd expect that in the event of Scottish independence, all of those market trends would probably continue. I should add, though, that even if Scotland votes no, the UK has sizable political uncertainties over the next couple of years. General election in 2015, possible EU referendum down the road. So that theme of political uncertainty will come back for the UK. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. So that was Michael Saunders, Head of European Economics at City.